Uh oh. Okay, we'll start with this. What was Keyshawn Davis's sensational knockout win over Gustavo Lima? So before yesterday, had never been knocked out, had never been stopped, arguably had never been beaten. As most who saw his fight with Richardson Hitchens were of the opinion that he should have got the nod and he should have got the decision, but he didn't. 29 and 1 going into this weekend's contest against Keyshawn Davis, who had a mere 11 pro fights. But he felt he was ready and he showed it. It didn't take Gustavo long to start trying for leaping hooks and lunging punches, taking big chances that would otherwise scare off a pure boxer. But ahead of the fight, I told you, Keyshawn Davis is no pure boxer. No, he's a boxer puncher. And there is a noticeable difference in how they handle pressure. And what was the first round of a contest that only lasted two. You see, Gustavo was trying to land big punches very early in the fight, big shots, and as soon as he started trying to land them, that's as soon as Keyshawn made him pay for it, just countering off the jab, moving and staying behind the jab, not retreating, holding his position and countering, because he wasn't scared off by the pressure that Gustavo was trying to put on him. He wasn't scared off. Boxer punchers look at that pressure as an opportunity to get off big punches, big counters, like Keyshawn did. And so he handled himself well in the first round with the lead hand with the jab closed the show big time in the second round Gustavo staying in character the way the pressure fighters often do he tries to put more pressure on Keyshawn Davis in the second round and pays for it even more off a massive right hand counter right hand a peach that sent him down hard and I don't think after that initial knockdown he ever fully recovered from it because he was on Queer Street the rest of the round. The fight. Knocked down a grand total of three times three, before the referee three, three. waved it off. Keyshawn Davis made short work of what was an otherwise durable game and tough, tough guy. Took him out in just two rounds. How do you reconcile it? Why couldn't Richardson Hitchens do that? Perspective. It's not because Gustavo Limos is a bad fighter that Keyshawn took him out so easily. And it's not because Richardson Hitchens is a bad fighter that he struggled with that same Gustavo. It's not because of any of that. It's because styles make fights. And boxer punchers and pure boxers react differently to the same stimuli. That being pressure. And that's what separates them. Boxer punchers and that base style, I think is the hardest base style to identify because when a pressure guy's in the ring, you can tell, you can tell right away. It's the same with a pure boxer, whereas a boxer puncher is a bit more nuanced. And not all boxer punches are created equal. We'll get into that. But the boxer puncher base style, I think is the hardest to interpret and the hardest to identify because they can box a bit and they can punch a bit alternating between the two. And that's what makes boxer punchers who they are. That's all in the name, boxer puncher. Keyshawn Davis is a boxer puncher. And so ahead of the fight, I went with Keyshawn to win on that premise, knowing that this was a big step up in competition for him, that he'd be fighting a guy who's vastly more experienced than he is with a lot more fights and a lot more rounds in the bank, a guy who arguably beat Richardson Hitchens, but Keyshawn had the right style for the job and I went with him to win. He did, but I was surprised. He made this look very easy. I didn't think it was going to be that easy. And what was one of the more ideal homecoming fights, ideal homecoming performances I've ever seen. Perfect. A lot of those homecoming fights don't go according to plan, don't go according to script. I remember when Regis Progray had his, that was a lackluster performance. Subriel Matias lost his belt in a homecoming fight. So did Jarrett Hurd, so did Julian Williams. Katie Taylor suffered her first professional loss in what was a homecoming fight. Those homecoming fights, 
They can be a curse. A gift and a curse. So maybe some fighters get distracted. Fighting in front of the hometown crowd, they're distracted by the occasion, not focusing on the man in front of them, but Keyshawn... Well, he was focused. He was not distracted. Flawless victory. Perfect. It was perfect. In front of a sold-out crowd of 10,000 screaming fight fans that all showed up and showed out to see Keyshawn Davis in action in what was his return home, the standout amateur, the Olympian, the upstart in the paid ranks, who's on the cusp of now fighting for a world title as a result of this big win. That was a signature performance. Now what he needs is a signature win. Because there is a difference. Gustavo is not necessarily one of the somebodies at or around these weights. He's a solid guy, definitely a handful for Keyshawn Davis. That was a signature performance. I think that's the best I've ever seen him. But for a signature win, you're gonna need somebody a little bit more well-known, somebody who's a little bit more battle-tested. Enter Dennis Berenchik. Perfect. Newly crowned WBO champion. Perfect. So during the post-fight interview, Keyshawn Davis made it a point to call out Gervonta Davis, the other Davis, at this weight saying, knock knock for a fight that in all likelihood won't happen Gervonta has held off on fighting so many of his contemporaries that i don't get the sense he's gonna fight the new kid on the block Keyshawn is not from the same cycle of fighters as Gervonta Davis. Gervonta's cycle of fighters, Devin and Shakur and Teofimo. Those guys. Those are his contemporaries, and all those are the guys that he hasn't fought and isn't about to fight. Thus, when I look over at Keyshawn, who's only 12-0 and and still building his name. Making his bones. Consider that Turkey LL Sheik tried to get involved. He tried to finance a fight between Gervonta Davis and Devin Haney, and we saw how Gervonta Davis responded. You gotta give me two Ferraris. And a Birkin bag. Is my pussy pot the feeling? The little sissy doesn't want to fight nobody, in a nutshell. If Turkey can't convince you to fight Devin in Saudi for big money, Keyshawn's not gonna convince you to fight him anywhere for any amount of money. Both boxer punchers. Now, obviously, Javante Davis is a lot more experienced as a boxer puncher in the paid ranks. We know a bit more about him and what he can take as well as what he can handle than Keyshawn. More fights and more rounds in the bank. A battle between them would decide who's the better boxer puncher, Javante Davis or Keyshawn Davis. Davis. Not all boxer punches are created equal. You got boxer punches like Teofimo Lopez that do tend to lean more towards the boxing and the counter punch and then you have other boxer punchers that show more of a mean streak, like uh, Floyd Schofield. Aggression. The trade-off is that the boxer punchers like Teofimo Lopez are more reserved and more economic, and the boxer punchers like a Floyd Schofield take more of an initiative, but sacrifice defense in doing so. Throwing combinations and being prolific within a round. Not all boxer punches are created equal, but the earmark of the boxer puncher is this is a fighter who can box and punch move and punch. Where does Keyshawn Davis fall into that category? Well, we know he can move and counter. We know he can move and punch. We saw that yesterday. We know he can string together combinations and be prolific that it's not just one or two hard punches at a time. Right. Can he come forward and do that though? Because not all boxer punchers can. Two good examples are Teofimo Lopez and Regis Progre. These are boxer punchers that are good at hanging back and working off the counter, but aren't that good on the front foot. They're not that good coming forward. Keep telling you, not all boxer punches are created equal. Some are more limited than others. Some are not as versatile, as malleable in a variety of situations. So the question is, is Keyshawn Davis? Is he like that? Keyshawn Davis was able to knock out Gustavo Limos for the same reason Javante was able to knock out Roly Romero and Leo Santa Cruz. Caught the guys coming forward, leaving their chins out there. Use their aggression against them. That's what Keyshawn did to Gustavo. Same thing. Where Gervonta Davis' experience comes into it is that at least on two occasions, I've seen him get on the front foot. I've seen him come forward on a guy. Didn't look that great when he did it, but that's what he did to Frank Martin. He had to walk him down. He had to stalk him. Get at him. To knock him out. The other was Hector Luis Garcia. I remember in spots in the Hector Luis Garcia fight, he was coming forward on him. Experience. You guys know I am not a fan of Javante Davis, the way his career has been managed, or his quality of competition, but I can say he's at least shown some ability to come forward and initiate. He looked a lot more vulnerable coming forward than he does hanging back. Better still, still, he's done that. He did it. Can Keyshawn Davis do it? That's what time will tell. 
As so many are rushing to assumption and jumping to the conclusion that Richardson Hitchens is not a good fighter because he struggled with Gustavo. What? That because Richardson Hitchens went life or death and arguably lost to Gustavo Limos, he's not a good fighter. He's not a boxer puncher. I thought you said he was a pure boxer. He is, and that's the point I'm making. Where some will say that Richardson Hitchens is not a good fighter because he looked bad with Gustavo, he might look all right against the boxer puncher because pure boxers have a tactical edge over boxer punches. Unless that boxer puncher is comfortable coming forward and initiating, stalking and walking down that pure boxer, they could struggle. You're saying Keyshawn could struggle. I am. I'm saying he could struggle with Richardson Hitchens. Or another fighter like him, a pure boxer. That's a Shakur Stevenson. That's a Devin Haney. Styles make fights. You hear it all the time. And that's why Gustavo might have the right style to give Richardson Hitchens problems. But Hitchinson Richens might have the right style to give Keyshawn Davis problems. Keyshawn that didn't have no problems with Gustavo. Oh. Styles make fights and boxing math is funny. Just because Keyshawn made short work of Gustavo doesn't necessarily mean he'd make short work of Hitchens and Richens. You have to grade the fighters on some other kind of curve, not simply a common opponent, because triangle theories don't work. You hear that all the time, too. Why did Keyshawn beat Gustavo Limo so easily? Because he used his aggression against him to land hard punches. The question, is that how Richards and Hitchens fights? Is he an overly aggressive fighter that's gonna throw leaping hooks? No. What's he? Because he's not a pressure guy. He's a pure boxer. He's gonna hang back, stay behind his jab, be patient, move around. You won't have the same opportunities to hit a Hitchardson Richens that you had to hit a Gustavo Limos. With Hitchardson Richens, you're gonna have to go after him. You're gonna have to get at him. And that's where a boxer punches ability and comfortability coming forward comes into it. Is Keyshawn just as effective on the front foot as he is on the back foot? As not every boxer puncher is. We see what Teofimo's limitations are, what Regis Progre's limitations are. They're all right on the back foot, hanging back and working off the counter, but coming forward, they're vulnerable, they're hittable. And maybe that's what separates a C-level, a B-level boxer puncher from an A-level boxer puncher. Because they all have the same base style, but they may be competing at a different level with it. A-level, B-level, C, D, E-level, and thus, not all boxer punches are created equal. Keyshawn Davis versus Hitchardson Richens, if that fight ever materialized, I feel like that'll be more of a test for Keyshawn than yesterday's fight was. I do, based on the styles. And Javante? Javante Davis versus Keyshawn Davis is an excellent fight. Very interesting. Who's better with that base style, Keyshawn or Javante? But I can't get too excited about it because how many guys have called out Javante Davis? And how many of them has he actually fought? Can't get excited about him or his career because in all likelihood, he's not gonna fight Keyshawn any more than he fought Devin Haney when he was at lightweight to Shakur, who's still there now. It's an interesting conversation to have, but it'll never be more than that. A conversation. It will never be more than just a conversation boxing fans have because the actual fight won't happen. When all the smoke settled, I noticed via top-ranked social media account, they asked who's next. Who's next for Keyshawn Davis? In the image seen here, you see unbeaten up-and-comer Raymond Murataya, reigning IBF champion Vasil Lomachenko, and reigning WBO champion Denis Berenchik. I don't get the sense they're gonna throw caution to the wind and put Raymond in there with Keyshawn straight away. If they do, then I've got Keyshawn. I didn't like the way Raymond looked with Tevin Farmer. Things like angles and movement give you problems, then Keyshawn's gonna give you problems with more punching power, speed, and sharpness than Tevin Farmer. Farmer gave you problems, Keyshawn will give you problems, and he'll beat you. So I feel like they decide to get Raymond the title, a title of some kind, before they put him in there with Keyshawn. I don't get the sense that Top Rank would make a fight like that straight away. They mentioned Vasil Lomachenko, but as we all know, Vasil Lomachenko, in spite of being a champion, he's on his way out. He's courting retirement. I have no time for Javante Davis, so you think he's gonna make time for Keyshawn Davis? I don't. Though I don't begrudge the people at top rank mentioning him because while well, he is still a reigning world champion at the weight and thus is the responsibility of any belt holder, any titleist, 
any champion who still is a champion, your name is going to get thrown in the hat. But I don't expect it to happen. I expect that Vasil Lomachenko will not fight Keyshawn Davis because he's on his way out. His countryman. And his countryman. Dennis. Newly crowned WBO champion Dennis Berenchik. That seems more feasible to me. More viable. And I remember hearing in the buildup of this weekend's fight that the winner of it would go on to challenge Dennis Berenchik. It's my understanding is promoted by Frank Warren, is promoted by Queensbury Promotions. And we know that Top Rank and Queensbury, Frank and Bob, have a good working relationship that could see that fight happen. Now, will Frank send Dennis over? What is Dennis Berenchik and his WBO title worth? to Frank Warren. How much of a stake does Frank Warren have in today's lightweight division? Enough that he would want to promote the Keyshawn Davis fight or not so much to where he'll send Dennis over. I mean, he sent him over for the Emmanuel Navarrete fight. So why wouldn't he send him over for the Keyshawn Davis fight? I feel like if and when that fight happens, it'll happen in America. It'll happen on the top rank side of things. Dennis Berenchik versus Keyshawn Davis. How does that fight break down? What kind of fighter? is Dennis Berenchik. Now this is a guy whose base style is a bit harder to peg because he's not quite a boxer puncher, but he's not quite a pressure fighter either. He has standout properties, standout qualities from both base styles. Uh -huh. He's got a hybrid base style, like his more famous countryman, Vasil Lomachenko, that exists somewhere in between the boxer puncher and the pressure fighter because he's got the movement and the angles and the ring savvy of the boxer puncher, but the propensity and temperament of the pressure fighter. Dennis Berenchik is an aggressive fighter. You could never confuse him for a pure boxer. You would never take him for one of those. You would never peg him for that. Pure boxer. Not this guy. He's too aggressive and too active within a round so his base style lives somewhere in between the boxer puncher and the pressure fighter the same amateur cycle as Vasil Lomachenko and Oleksandr Vozdyk, Oleksandr Rusik same Ukrainian amateur team hence the influence you see how he fights if you've seen how he fights so this could be a tricky fight for Keyshawn Davis certainly harder than this past weekend's fight was but what's working for Keyshawn is he's a lot younger than Dennis Dennis is in his mid-30s time is on Keyshawn Davis's side I want to say that Keyshawn looks quicker to the draw. He looks like he's got more speed and sharpness than Dennis Berenchik, but Dennis is a handful. He can be. He's a well-schooled boxer. Light on his feet. He likes to use angles to deliver his punches, just like Vasil Lomachenko. Though I think Keyshawn is the faster fighter of the two in terms of hand speed. I think he's the stronger fighter of the two in terms of punching power. If you're asking who's next for Keyshawn Davis as the next year approaches, I think it's going to be Dennis. I think his next fight is going to be a WBO title fight with Dennis Berenchik. And I like Keyshawn's chances in what I think will be a more difficult fight than the Lemos fight was. Because Dennis is aggressive like Gustavo Lemos, but he uses a lot more angles than Gustavo. He's got much better feet than Gustavo. Keyshawn will have to work harder for this one.